See, words are powerful. Words can make or mar a person. Welcome to today's DDRX. The prescription is check your choices. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. We want to look at Jesus and, and the Pharisees as suiting words and stinging words. See, words are powerful. Words can make or mar a person. And when words are motivated by Satan or demonic forces, they are full of evil, destruction, and negativity. But when words are motivated by God, they are full of love, full of mercy, full of forgiveness. So when people are going through issues, either of their own making, are you quick in passing judgment? Are your words suiting or stinging? Do you add salt to their injury by your words? It's a matter of choice. In John 8, 1 to 11, a woman was caught in adultery. You see, the Jewish leaders and the Pharisees, they brought her to Jesus with a lot of stinging words. They were quick to pass judgment. You know, it is interesting, you know, it takes two people to tango, but they brought only this woman and they were accusing her. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger, he kept quiet. In John 8, 7 to 8, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. You know, Jesus' words were so suiting. In verse 10 to 11, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. You know, in Ephesians 4, 29, the Bible tells us, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the era. So choose your words. Let your word be suiting. Thank you.